Hi, Chris Dicker from IFM here. Today we're going to program in a bearing. Now I'm assuming that you've seen my previous two videos, so we've actually started a project. Um, but basically all we want to do is create um, just one object. But we're going to need an, a, a dynamic input, so make sure that you've got a, at least one accelerometer connected. So here we've got a VSA001 connected, our MEM sensor. Um, so we need that for starters. The next thing that you need to do for a bearing is you must have a trigger. So you need to have a speed input of some sort. So basically just right click on triggers and you'll see here you can either have a constant speed trigger or you can have a variable one. My machine here is constant speed so I'm just going to put in what it is. It runs at 1485 roundabout. So I'm going to put in that. It actually has to be pretty accurate. So if you're not on, you'll see what I mean later on. Uh, if you're not right on the speed. So you can also do, I'll just show you, uh, we can do another one. I'll just do a variable one. Uh, we have to do an analog input. So on analog input before, actually I'll go back to here. You actually got to turn this on. So analog input. And you'll see here, if I double click on it, you'll see all the parameters for it. So if I hit the drop down, you'll see you can have an analog current. So if you've got a VF drive, you can get the uh, analog directly out of that. But if you've just got a prox, and a prox is the most accurate way of measuring speed because we don't get any slip, a uh, digital pulse is what you want. So then you need to know how many revolutions, it's, uh, how many pulses it's going to be per rev. So normally it's going to be one if it's on a keyway. If you do it on a coupling, you might have four or eight. So uh, you just put the correct number of pulses per revolution there, and you're pretty much done. Then you need to have that trigger. So here's the analog in, and it's set for pulse. Uh, yeah, they don't differentiate between analog until you get into this part here. But this part here, you do need to put in around about the, the right speed. So if we're looking at 1500, uh, 485, oops, 1500 will be will suffice perfectly there. Okay, so once you've got your speeds right, you can create your bearing. So if you click on objects, you can either click on a right mouse click on it and go through the bearing you bearing wizard that way, or if you want to click on the icon, you can do that. So if you had all four sensors that you'd see them all there and you can do them all in one hit. We've only got one just to simplify things, so we'll click on that. So there's our first object. So sensor one, it's a bearing diagnosis and it's diagnosis number one. In the software, I like to mark what I've programmed in there because there's no other place that it comes up. So if you know what the bearing is, so if we put in an SKF6205, which is what my bearing is, and go next, it will say, how do I want to put that in now? So we're going to just browse the bearing database. So that's fine. We'll click on next, and then type in 6205, and press search. Once you do that, you'll see that all the different uh, brands of bearings in there, and you'll find that it's very, very important to know, if possible, which bearing uh, manufacturer made that bearing. Uh, this one here is not actually too bad because there's only a few different bearings in there, but if I put in the wrong one, I'll show you what will happen. So, the correct, my correct bearing is this one here, down here, 6205 SKF. So if I click it, you'll see this little green dot coming there. If I click one of the other ones, say the SKF economy bearing 6205E, it's got eight balls rather than nine balls, and you'll see you'll get a red indicator now. That means that it's not going to be terribly successful, the bands will be too wide, and you won't get proper monitoring. So that's why it's very important to train your people, your fitters to, uh, in particular, to let you know what manufacturer the bearing is. Okay, so we click on next. We've got the units new. You'll see the frequency factors. So these frequency factors are multiplied by the speed. That's why you must have a speed input in there, otherwise it won't monitor correctly. Okay, so there we're done. You can actually make a window to to make it wider or narrower even. But normally most people will leave it on two percent, and that's fine as long as you've got the right bearing. Okay, we're next. So we're going to use the speed trigger. It's automatically defaulted there. You can use a reference value as well, uh, but most cases it's not necessary. 
and this is the speed that we're going to use. We could also use the analog one if we wanted to, but the constant one is the machine that I've got here, so 1485. Okay, if you've got bearings that are on a pulley or on a gearbox, then you'll naturally need to change the object speed. But in our case, this is one to one, so that is fine. So we'll go next. This is the damage level for in acceleration. So the damage le level set at four, 450 and the warning set at 250. Normally I change that to 350 because I don't see there's a point in doing it so low down. But anyway, we'll talk about that at some other time. Anyway, if we finish that and now you've created the bearing here. So all you need to do now is to connect this unit. And you'll see the green indicator there. We can save it and we need to also write it to the unit. Uh, it says that I do not have an alarm configured and therefore no output either and it's quite correct I didn't do that so let's do that now we'll just go to alarms and just get rid of it anyway so if I go to alarms and new alarm and if I put a warning alarm in you'll see that that's the only unit in, in there for under warning and if I go to alarms again and put a new alarm for damage it'll automatically create one for that too so again save it write it and you're done now we can actually monitor our spectra I'll close this down make this big so you've got our spectra here what we actually want to monitor though is our handing window fast Fourier transform demodulated data if you all you also want to click on sub objects so that you can see what you're doing now because it's a fixed speed object you'll see this is the outer race this is the rolling elements right there and this is the inner race so the when you program in that correct bearing those traces are there automatically for you if it was a variable you wouldn't see any of these until the speed started to come up and then they'll start ramping up to the right speed and stop on that speed but anyway i've got a good bearing in in my unit at the moment when good bearings are, are span and they're in very good condition they're a perfect rolling element and they will have very little signature and probably none that are close to what we're looking for at the moment so i'll show you that there's a little bit there but that may not necessarily be uh, the, uh, the frequency of the bearing so you can see very low amplitude and nothing actually on our bearing so we can actually have a look at our damage level screen there's a bearing there, there's very little noise in there. You can even show it as a table form if you like. So this will change state if it goes into a yellow alarm, warning or damage level alarm. You can see my speed there. Let's go back and we'll go back to our spectra. Okay, I'm turning it off and I'm gonna change that now to a damaged outer race. So I've got a bearing here That'll just change either. Quick change. So now you can see on the outer race, you can see all the lovely harmonics. You can actually see a bit of damage on the uh, in the race of rolling elements as well. And you can probably see some slide bands as well. So you know, no uh, kidding that you've got a problem here. So you see straight away they've got almost a G of energy over a G now. Uh, if I have a look at the other unit, this will change state. And you can see exactly what it is. If this variable would be a monitoring my variable speed as well. So that's your uh, address. So I'll just go back to our spectra again. And we'll just say disappear. I'm now going to show you what uh, damage on the inner race of the bearing looks like. So this is the same bearing, but now we've got damage on the inner race. So if I start the machine up again, you can see now that the damage is blocked from the outer race, now to the inner race. With a different set of harmonics, it's a totally different picture picture altogether. Um, again, we can show you the harmonics. The fundamental frequency and you can see where the harmonics are. So again, very easy to see that you've got a problem. Again, if you have a look at the damage level, 
say that they've got a big heart, but uh, it's 1.3 G's there. Uh, you can have a look at a, in a table form as well. Uh, yeah, so there's no problem there in just ascertaining it, there's no problem with that there. Okay, uh, that's all there is to me to do at this stage, so I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the um, little training session, and uh, good luck. IFM, close to you.